and singing us a song. So please welcome Rabbi Alter. So the first time I was here at Thanksgiving, I was at the uh, here at the Federated Church, and I gave a little sermon for the first time in my life. And you guys have been such a wonderful audience here at the church for the last 23 and a half years that I've been here. And my my goal for tonight is to try to explain Hanukkah in two minutes. Then. <laughs> so how do we do that? So I'm going to tell you a little story uh, about about Hanukkah. Many many years ago. 2,000 years ago, the Syrian Greeks were in the land of Israel and they put up idols in our temple. And there was a man named Mattathias and his family that refused to bow down to the idols. So they said, you know what? We're not going to bow down. And that started a war with the Syrian Greeks. God was with the Maccabees and they defeated the Syrian Greeks. And they can only find oil to light the menorah, which is a seven, uh, seven light candelabra in the temple. And they miraculously found one little bit of oil, and it lasted for the entire eight days of the holiday. So they made it an eight day holiday, and they said, oh, look at this, one little flask of oil. And it was pure, and it lasted eight days. So we have a Hanukkah holiday, which lasts eight days. So this is how. Uh, the origins of Hanukkah came to this country. Many, many years ago, in the 1800s, where I come from, is everyone here from Poland, the Eastern Europe? Well, in the old days, if you wanted people to come to services, you knocked on their door. That's how you got them. So you knocked on the door, you go, can you also come to the synagogue now? We need them, we need 10 people to say prayers. So what happened in the old days? In the old days, they gave tips out for these people that every day would knock on your door and say, can you come out and help us so we can pray at the synagogue and say the appropriate prayers and read from the Bible? So it was a custom to tip these people in the 1800s. They were tipping them at the end of the year. Sound familiar? Holiday end of year tips. So on Hanukkah, they never minted money in the ancient days on Hanukkah. It was prohibited. So in the old days, they would give money. They would give like a little bit of money to these people that would spend the year knocking on people's doors, telling them to please come out for services. When, when Jews came to this country, there was no need to do that anymore because I don't know about you, but people in Colchester wouldn't like me knocking on their door at 7.30 in the morning saying, can you come in for a service, please? It's the Sabbath. So we didn't do that custom anymore. Instead, we posted messages on the phone machine. Services are at 9 a.m. We'll send emails out. So what happened is we had this custom of giving money on Hanukkah. And it's called Hanukkah. Does anyone know the Yiddish word for it? Yeah. Gelt. Gelt is Yiddish for money. So Hanukkah gelt, that's how it started, with tips for Hanukkah gelt. When my ancestors came here in the 1920s, they said, well, we don't need that anymore to give tips. So instead, we have a custom of making chocolate a Hanukkah gel. So everyone, all the kids in the school think that gel is candy. It's not, it means money. But they wanted to have this culture assimilated here in the United States about what Hanukkah was all about. It was tipping and helping out those in need. So they started this custom of Hanukkah gel, making chocolate. Now they have bittersweet, and then they have um, regular dark chocolate and brown chocolate and milk chocolate and all different types of chocolate. But it actually means gelt, and we keep the tradition alive by giving out Hanukkah gelt to children because we want people to think the holiday is sweet. By the way, the whole idea of gift giving was because of Christmas. When I was younger, in the 1950s, a long time ago, 1959, 
the gifts we got were not gifts like you get now. You don't go shopping to the mall and get gifts on Hanukkah. He gave coins. So my father gave us like a quarter back in 1959. Because of Christmas and everyone getting Christmas gifts, Jews said, hey, you know what? People say, it's not fair. We're not getting, we're not getting gifts on Hanukkah. So, so because of that and because of, of Christmas, we started giving Hanukkah gifts. Not only one gift, but some families like to give gifts every night. There are some families that the kids say, well, I want a gift every night for eight nights. So some families do that. But just so you know, the tradition was always just to give coins in, in memory of what would happen originally with Hanukkah in Eastern Europe. So anyway, so now you learned the word Hanukkah. So what is, I know we say Hanukkah here because it's hard to say the word Hanukkah, right? Because we got that. So anyway, so does anyone know what, what Hanukkah means? What, what does it mean? Does, it means something. Uh, Hanukkah means dedication. So it was a rededication of the temple. So we say Happy Hanukkah and to remind us that we had the great miracle of uh, the candles that in the ancient days was oil, but these days people don't like to use oil so much. But the miracle happened with oil. That's why we have oily food, such as potato pancakes we call latkes, with either sour cream or applesauce, depending on your tradition. And that's why we have donuts, jelly-filled oily donuts, right? So that whole tradition comes from the miracle happened with oil. It gives an excuse for all the dermatologists to make big business after at the Hanukkah. And everyone's eating all these oily foods for eight days because everyone said, okay, Miracle have more oil, so I'm going to uh, have every oily food possible. So it doesn't matter what you have, but the tradition is usually the potato pancakes and also the jelly donuts. So that's what we serve at our party. Everyone's invited and wants to come next Saturday night. We have oily food at the synagogue at 6 p.m. <laughs> so I wanted to do a, a Hanukkah song for you. I know 300 Hanukkah songs, so I was trying to figure out which Hanukkah song I would like to uh, talk about. So there's a thing called a dreidel. Do you know what a dreidel is? It's a top. And there's four letters on it. Nun gimel heishin. Neis gadol hayasham. The great miracle happened there. Where? In Israel. In Modi'in, in Israel. But if you live in Israel, it's en gimel heipei. Neis gadol hayapo, here in the land of Israel. So it actually didn't come from the Hebrew on the dreidel. It came, it's a top, but the words come from the German. Because what happened is, in the ancient days, when Jews were supposed to be uh, not studying the Bible, the Syrian Greeks didn't like it. So what happened? They put away the books and they played this top game called dreidel, and they come and say, wow, you're not playing, you're not studying, you're well, playing this game. So they put some money in, a little bit of money in. So it actually comes from the German, with nun for you get nothing, which is nisht, gibble, <laughs> you know, gans, you get the whole thing, hey, howl, right? And shin, still, you have to put in. So you can make a, a dreidel game into a little fun game where you can, you know, we play with the gold coins, you know, the gel, you don't have to make it into a gambling game, but but that's that's what the song is about. It's called Sivi Von So So So, and then I'll do an English version of it. So Sivi Von So 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 means the Sivi Von. The dreidel is spinning around during the holiday, and that's the way we, we celebrate it. And you put your hand on top of the dreidel, whatever letter it lands on, that's what happens. Whether you get nothing, you get half, you get the whole thing, or you put in two coins. So here's how it goes. <laughs>